I too am a mischievous scamp burdened with glorious purpose. Oh, sorry. Ah, oh, shit. I got a ticket. Where's my ticket? Alright, you have no idea how many times it took me to say mischievous. That was a really hard word for me to say, apparently. Anyways, hello everybody and welcome to my review of the series premiere of Loki, Disney Plus's latest MCU series, and I am so excited to talk about with this one all you words good say I. Yes, um, I have been so excited for this series. Loki is easily one of my favorite characters in the MCU. Tom Hiddleston is one of my favorite actors. I adore him in everything that I see him in. Um, but also, I was kind of tentative on this show as well because one of my least favorite things in any type of fiction or storyline is when we see a character get an arc and then we like regress the character to a different point. Like we jump back in time and like see him at a different time. So like memory erasure or like time travel type of stuff. I always hate that type of storyline. So knowing that this show is going to feature Loki, one of my favorite characters, but also feature a prior version of him after we'd had one of the best arcs up for a character in the MCU, I was so excited and like tentative about this show going in. Uh, and the fact that this show is going to be dealing with the multiverse, time travel, all that stuff, I'm like, oh, this could either be my favorite thing or my most frustrating thing ever. Ever. So all that being said, uh, what did I actually think of the episode? Well, I'm gonna do, just so you know, my spoiler-free discussion up front. I won't get into the nitty-gritty if you haven't seen the episode yet. And then I will get full-on into spoilers. So, spoiler-free, up front, what did I think? Well, I have to say... This episode did not disappoint. Without getting too much into spoilers, like I said, one of my biggest frustrations with these types of stories is like when we have a character who went through a whole arc and regressing, I'm sort of like frustrated because it's like we, I miss out on the character that I love. But this show actually did such a wonderful job of making that kind of part of the point that this was a Loki that we had seen before and all that stuff that we saw Loki go through is not irrelevant to this but actually informs the character. And again, I won't get too much into spoilers on that, but I thought that this was... If this is the tax you're going to take, this was the best way to do that. And I, I really appreciate that. It doesn't ignore all the stuff that came before with Loki and his arc, but actually uses it to inform the story here. Speaking of that, though, Tom Hiddleston is giving an amazing performance. I, I am honestly so excited to see him centered in this series because while I've loved him in every single uh, MCU project that he's been in, uh, I just I think he deserves center stage. And you can see why in this episode. Uh, even though th this episode is mostly an exposition-y dump episode, like this episode is really just setting the stage for things to come there's still some emotional gut punch moments that Tom Hiddleston basically delivers on his own and you see it all in his face and his performance um but also he's just also hysterical and living it up and doing his grander than life Loki thing that he's done in other uh other films so you still get that larger than life stuff but we also get more understated um sort of more naturalistic and and really like I said emotional performances from him he just shows his range in in what it isn't like I said an exposition episode so that's I I'm just excited to see where the rest of the series going goes given just the weight of what he gives here in the first episode. Speaking of other performances, Owen Wilson is also sort of the other main performer here. Uh, we don't get a ton in terms of emotional depth with this character, but I love, again, Owen Wilson, usually bombastic, over-the-top, very comedic type of actor, plays very understated here, and it works really well. He does sort of like, he is also very, very funny, and this whole show is just funny in general, at least so far. Um, but he uh, he is absolutely wonderful in this, in this sort of like understated comedic role. He even has, again, not a ton to do he's not the main focus of this uh in terms of a character arc but he does have some moments of like oh there's a, like there's some depth to this guy that i find super interesting and i'm intrigued to follow as the story goes along I also love the world that this is set in, the, ast the like bureaucratic aesthetic of it and the sort of like really powerful, uh, all-controlling sort of bure bureaucracy sort of thing. Something that like I, I love considering that I love things like Control um, and the Magnus Archives. It it's just a genre that works for me, like bureaucratic uh, control sort of idea, like horror sci-fi trippiness I, I genuinely enjoy it and the 80s aesthetic like the 80s office aesthetic of this world is is kind of a lot of fun and very very unique it's very much riffing off of Thor Ragnarok and that sort of 80s inspiredness but it's not like saying like oh this is just doing the same thing as that like crazy Ragnarok world it's riffing off the 80s but it's in its own way and I think that that's kind of really creative honestly to still stay within that sort of Thor-y type of world that um that we saw established there but build off of it in its own unique take. 
And then the final thing that I want to say with this is I think, and I'll get more into this when we get into plot, but the themes explored with this are super interesting. It's, it's, it seems like this show is going to be more about power and free will and control. Um, maybe that'll sort of divert into other themes going on here, but if those are the main ideas here, I think that that's a really great idea to delve into with Loki, because he is always someone who says, I've been burdened with glorious purpose. Well, this asks the question, who burdened him? What's the glorious purpose? Does he have choice in that purpose? Um, I think it's just some really cool ideas to delve into with Loki. Um, and so overall, I have to say, uh, this is a great, great first episode. I think it, it's very, very promising. Uh, it has some really intriguing questions. I am so excited to see where this is going to go. Uh, so if you have not seen it yet, I'm going to end my spoiler section just to tell you, it is really, really great. Uh, this, just judging over one episode, this has potential to be one of my more favorite things in uh, this franchise. Uh, again, we'll see how it ends up going. I said that before about like something like WandaVision, but it, it's starting off strong in my book. But with all that being said, let's get into the spoilers because I am so excited. Why am I doing this clapping thing? <laughs> Spoiler time, everybody. Like I said, this is mainly an exposition dump episode, but I just, I, I love, to be fair, if an exposition is done well enough, honestly, exposition can be some of my favorite things. I love learning so much about the world, and I feel like this show does it so, so well. Um, so let's get into it. We start off with the Avengers Endgame opening, sort of the beginning that we saw there. Uh, with the sort of beginning being that sort of section where we saw Loki going off. I loved him showing up in Mongolia. I love how we get the, you know, the TVA just sort of coming instantly in uh, to the situation. I thought there was going to be a little bit of like fun and time between, you know, the end of Endgame and when he gets picked up at the TVA. But nope, he just immediately Mongolia. He just like, I am burdened with glorious purpose. And they come right in and grab him. Uh, and I just, I, I love here just seeing how depowered and defanged Loki Loki is throughout this entire sequence, and it gets to that idea of control and free will. Uh, Loki is someone who's like said, I'm burdened with glorious purpose, I want to have control, I want to, you know, this whole idea of freedom constantly comes up. Later on when he's talking with Owen Wilson in this sort of like time room discussion place, um, he's talking about like, you know, people are burdened with freedom, um, and so, you know, they want to be controlled, but you get that sense here, he's he loses his control with the TVA. This episode is all about power, control, freedom. And I love seeing that with his interactions with the TVA here when they sort of like jump him back where he gets punched in the face and like he feels the pain in slow slow motion. Some really funny stuff, but it all kind of fits that thematics. Um, but it just it's also just clever, like different little bits and pieces of, uh, of this world that we get built out. When he arrives at the TVA, I love the sort of sequence like when he has to like write his, I know we saw it in the trailer, but like write his name on uh, like everything thing that he uh, has ever said uh, and he basically gets like sort of pushed into it like he just resists so much but eventually he just has to do it um, again fitting those theme stuff but it's also very very funny the robot thing too uh, when he's just like I guess I'm a robot maybe I'd be a, maybe I'm a robot again hinting at like grander uh, like MCU stuff like people being replaced by robots I'm sure has happened somewhere in the comics I'm sure there's gonna be a ton of Easter eggs in this show uh, the fact that the Tesseract gets taken away from him and all that stuff just all very funny um, we also get some very interesting exposition of I love how they deliver the exposition of like on the screen of the the, uh, the timekeepers, but interesting how that world building is built out. We see the see the timekeeper thing where we learn these timekeepers are the people that like tried to after a multiversal war they tried to make one sacred timeline that they put on and said this is what this is what we're going to do, uh, and that raises so many questions because we know that the MCU is building up a multiverse idea coming up very soon. So if there's only one timeline, the multiverse has sort of been shrunk down to the sacred timeline. Does that mean within this show we're going to see the multiverse being created yet again? Is it a lie? Is there really not just one sacred timeline but still a multiverse going on here so many questions and again well, how did the sacred timekeepers or the sa timekeepers decide that this was the timeline again i'm sure these are going to be questions that are going to be asked but just implicitly this idea of free will of why do they get to decide what the timeline is and if they decide what the timeline does any of us have any choices in the matter in terms of what the outcomes of different things are also even owen wilson later on or sorry during the trial sequence when um loki gets put in front of the uh the trial there's he, he says oh well, the avengers went back in time and i love that he knows that it was tony stark that went back in time he's like I can spell his cologne to Tony Stark's colognes. That was great. But you get this implication that the Avengers going back in time was always part of the plan. But then you remember back in Endgame that uh, you saw that the timeline split off and like become their own different thing. That sort of reference going on in Endgame. And just like, but if the Avengers were always supposed to close that loop off, then 
why did they even allow that when something like, you know, Loki being a time variant could even possibly happen in that sort of thing? It raises, again, some interesting free will questions that I'm so curious to see this show answer or bring up or even poke at. Uh, just some really cool questions going on here. We also get a sequence of Owen Wilson sort of they're dealing with a time variant. I liked, again, I love the moment where he has the little moment with the kid. It shows that he really cares. He seems like a, it kind of fleshes him out very quickly as a person who is actually caring if, uh, if you know, a little bit weird and eccentric. Then we get probably my favorite sequence in the whole episode where Owen Wilson comes in, Morbius I think is his name, takes Loki to another room uh, and they sort of sit down and they kind of have a talk and I love Owen Wilson just like, I'm kind of a fan of yours. I enjoy you. I think you're a good guy, but constantly poking him is like, why are you really here? You know, is it because you want to control things? You just want power? Like he's just saying like, you just want to control everything? Like what's it about? What's it about? And he shows him his entire life. Again, poking up this idea of free will. And Loki gets rightfully very upset. I mean, as would I if I had to rewatch Thor The Dark World. I would probably get just as upset as he did. Um, but uh, I love this conversation that they have. I mean, there's a lot of funny bits. Like, big metaphor guy. I think that makes you sound smart. I am smart. Okay. That's true. It's our mischievous little scamp. Like, there's so many great little lines just peppered throughout all of this in that conversation that I just absolutely adored. I also love the little, like, flashback to apparently uh, Loki was D.B. Cooper. I'm really kind of curious if that's going to have a point at any point. It, it feels a little, like, it was a fun little sequence. But I just wonder, it's like, what was the point of showing us that he was, you know, D.B. Cooper and was sort of messing around and did things on a bet uh, with Thor? I think that's funny. But it has me wondering, is that girl, that like flight attendant who Loki says, I'll see you later to, is she going to be a bigger deal later on? I feel like she might be. Maybe maybe I'm overreading it, but it just makes me wonder, like, why waste all that time on that sequence? Which was funny, but why waste all that time on that sequence if nothing was going to come back from it? And so I wonder if that flight attendant is going to be a bigger deal than this episode led us to expect. I also love during this conversation that we start to get an idea of the methodology or the um, viewpoint of the timekeepers because Owen Wilson, he points out one thing, he says that you fail so that others can be their best. And he points out to that the Avengers became their better selves because of Loki. And that constantly happens throughout Loki's life, that he's always losing so that others like Thor can be better people. And so that sort of subtly hints at like the timekeeper's ideas, like they're willing to sacrifice other people or make people the villains of a story in order to make other people better. And I like that that was subtly implied that that was the purpose that they have with the sacred timeline. Again, small little pieces here that I'm like, hmm, I wonder if that's intentional. Like maybe I'm overreading, but it feels like kind of interesting to sort of point to the ideology of what's going on here with the TVA and this idea of control and, and who has control here. But then we get a fun sequence where, um, where Loki escapes and gets away, which I also liked because it subtly hints again too that Loki does have some power and agency here. Again, sort of setting up the reveal at the end of this episode that the time variant that they're chasing after is also a version of Loki, which is super interesting. Um, but we'll talk about that in a second. But I like that Loki's able to escape and they don't have full control and awareness of him. And again, sort of showing like they don't, they're not as powerful as they claim to be if Loki can get away and get, you know, get out of there. And I love that when he's escaping and the guy doesn't know what a fish is, he leaves his whole thing behind a desk. Again, subtly world building. Like, this guy lives his entire life behind a desk. So what are these people? Again, they have had no agency in their own lives. He just lives at, he was born and lived at a desk. Super fascinating. Uh, and people have infinity zones as like desktop, like as like little, um, you know, paperweights. And I love that that's Loki just sort of like, oh my God, where am I? If they just use infinity tone stones, just like whatever. But again, I love the subtle world building with moments like that. Like I actually found the fish thing to be way more interestingly thematically than the infinity stones, honestly. Uh, again, so the point, I just, I'm loving these little hints of this control idea. Maybe it's the leftist in me. Maybe I'm maybe I'm reading too much into the bureaucratic, uh, you know, people outside of our control, controlling all of our lives and we're just in the system. Uh, probably reading a bit into that, but I like it. I like it. I also like his fight with the, uh, the TVA sort of Minutemen, uh, lady. She seems really, really cool. And, and I like that he sort of rewinds her and gets her away. I think that was, that was like a clever use of that setup and payoff of that device. But then I like that Loki at the end sort of comes to this thing where it's just like, I do it because I want to have the illusion of control. It's all just an illusion. He's making a desperate play for control. 
And I love that. It fits into this idea. Like, he has that all that insecurity. It sort of delves right into his psyche. And I like that he gets that after seeing how his life turns out. Again, this idea that I was talking about before in my spoiler-free section, that I liked that his life, that we everything that we saw in the MCU informs this character. That he's made aware uh, of this version of Loki. That he's made aware of what happens to him in uh, the main timeline. That it wasn't just something that gets ignored, but it actually has relevance here. Um, and I think that 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 makes me very happy because again I just I always get bothered when characters just get erased um we don't get to see like we just get a new version of a character with like time you know memory wipes or things like that it always bothers me and so I like that here I really really do I think it's absolutely wonderful to bring that up but again, I love that it ends in this character revelation for Loki. And then I love the bomb drop to the episode that the variant that they're chasing after is another version of Loki. Oh, it's going to be, ooh, it's going to be so, so interesting to see where that goes. Because that is, that is super fascinating. I can see that really tying into so many of these themes and ideas that this episode has started to bring up. Uh, and then the end sequence with the mysterious person sort of killing Minutemen at the end. And I'm curious why we didn't see Loki's face revealed underneath the cloak. Does that makes me wonder, is there someone else besides Loki going on here? Uh, so very interesting to see with that. I also am wondering if that sword thing, that third millennium thing, I'm sure that's an Easter egg reference to something. But anyways, uh, yeah. As you can tell, I am super, super uh, down with this show. Uh, the themes of control and bureaucracy and free will are ones that super resonate with me and I think has the potential to really kind of say something interesting with this show. Um, I mean, obviously, I've been kind of frustrated with uh, some of the other messaging of the previous MCU series um, and just some of their, like, end resolutions and how they sort of resolve their themes. So I'm tentative with where this one goes, but if this one goes well, this has potential to be one of the ones that most resonates with me. Again, as someone who's a fan of video games like Control, of things like the Magnus Archives, which I also highly recommend if you have not listened to. Or shows like Devs, too. So yeah, this show is, was great, absolutely fantastic, and I am so ready for the rest of this series. But that's enough of me. What did you think of Loki and its first episode? Do you think we have any free will? I'd love to hear all of that down in the comments below. Don't forget, I will be reviewing this show on this channel every single week, for, so don't forget to subscribe. I also have my main channel, Jesse Gender, where I do more video essay type stuff. And I also have a Patreon where you can help support me doing what I do. But beyond all of that, I hope that you, as always, live long and stay sexy.